and it's early December and early in the morning on a uh, very pleasant late fall day. Temperatures in the 20s right now, but going to get up in the low 40s today with blue skies and light winds. And this uh, nice fall morning, late fall morning, early winter morning, finds me in New Haven County, Connecticut, about 20 miles from Long Island Sound in the uh, mountains. These are small mountains, but they are mountains of South Central Connecticut. The number of trails in this area um, is amazing. Pretty much every every chunk of land that's too rocky to be developed has been put, in, been put into public ownership. And there's trails um, by the dozens in this area. I'm on um, one of the Blue Blaze trails in Connecticut here. This is a spur trail of the Mattabesset Trail, which is a through trail. We're on a little spur of that right now, but... I'm going to be hiking in this area. There's a major fault line that runs right through this area. We're going to be studying that and um, the rocks on both sides of that fault line today. I'm on my way up to an overlook and this uh, rock outcrop caught my attention. Let's just stop and reposition myself for one second here. This rock in the foreground here kind of reminds me of one of the cartoon characters. We can get it all to come into view here. I think I'm a little too close to actually see it um, as one piece. Maybe from the other side we can take a look at that. But um, kind of reminds me of one of the uh, Goofy or Pluto or one of those dogs on the Disney cartoon tunes years ago. There's that rock that I thought looked like a cartoon character right in the front here. Almost looks like a dog or a fox with a pointy nose there. But we're on the east side of uh, Connecticut Route 77. Connecticut Route 77 uh, follows what's called the Eastern Border Fault, which separates the uh, younger rocks to my west and these older rocks that I'm looking at right now. And um, there are ancient lava flows to my west that form the cap of what's called Bluff Head, which is part of Totucket Mountain which um, has a very long trail along it. And to the east of Route 77, we're in what's called the Braymore Preserve. And there's several shorter trails here to some interesting rock outcrops and even a natural overlook um, just a few minutes from here. We'll pause and take a look at that map. And before looking at the map, um, I had a chance to hike in this area a few weeks ago and was really amazed at the size of the crystals in the rocks. Here's my index finger for scale. When you have crystals of quartz, or this could be a white feldspar here or a pink feldspar that's turned white with age. When you have crystals this large, it means the rocks cooled. Um, well underground, they formed well underground, and the minerals that are of like chemistry all found each other because they had time to do that while the rock was cooling. Here's a layer of quartz here that goes for several inches. And lots of mica in the rocks around here. As the sun comes out today and over the hilltop, it'll start to shine even more. Um, We are on the side of the fault here where the mica is common. And I don't expect to find it up on Bluff Head. Those rocks are much younger and they formed in a completely different environment than the ones we're looking at right now. But we'll be looking for all kinds of stuff on this hike today. Plants, rocks. Um, there's no snow to track animals today, but there may be some tracks in the mud. And... Um, Got about seven hours to explore this area. What I have um, posted on this rock here, behind this little uh, black birch sapling, uh, we've got the Braymore Preserve to the east side of the Eastern Border Fault, which is also this white line, Connecticut Route 77. And to the west of that line is what's called 
the Northwoods, James Valley, and Bluffhead Preserves. These are all um, part of an effort by the town of Guilford, Connecticut, to preserve land and create recreational opportunities. And there's many, many more preserves in this area operated by the town of Guilford. And um, more than you can do in one day or even one week. We're going to spend about seven hours out here exploring this whole area, including the Bluff Head, which has uh, got a great view from what I've read. But I've never hiked any of these trails before, so we'll see what comes along as it comes along. And really no more than a 15 minute hike from the parking lot on Route 77 in the Braymore Preserve. You come to the uh, spur trail that goes to the Overlook. It's supposed to have views all the way to Long Island Sound and all the way up into Central Connecticut. And from there we can get an eye on the prize. My goal today was to spend a lot of time up on Bluff Head, which is part of Totuket Mountain. But I knew I could get a good view of that from up here. And this preserve alone is worth seeing, and there's many other preserves that the uh, Blue Blaze Matabeset Trail goes through in this area. But I took the blue and red trail to the red trail, and now I'm on the yellow trail. And this little knob up here is where the view is supposed to be. Let's um, walk towards the sun and soak up this view as best we can. And Bluffhead, which is the uh, northern part of Totuket Mountain, is to my west here. We're going to zoom in on the uh, cliffs that are made of ancient lava flows here. And off in the distance, those cliffs are getting lit up by this early morning sun. And um, there's extensive trail systems on that mountain. And many extensive trail systems to my east. Every town around here has nature preserves. And the state of Connecticut has a lot of public land around here too. So um, this whole area is just an outdoor lover's paradise. And you know, you don't have to climb thousands of feet to get views around here. So you can get a pretty good view without much time or effort. It's very rocky around here. It's not easy hiking, but you're not climbing huge mountains to get a view. Got a little uh, bare oak growing right here on this ledge. So if you think bare oak, think B-A-R-E rock. And that's where it's often found. It was up in uh, the Blue Hills Reservation a few weeks ago. Recording for Barking Up the Right Tree and found acres and acres of this bare oak growing up there. 
and um, it's common in Connecticut as well as long as you have B-A-R-E bare rock ledges or in some cases very sandy soil but it needs full sun and um, I've got a lot more information on bare oak B-E-A-R is the spelling like a bear that runs through the woods um, on barking up the right tree my other channel but uh, it tends to grow out more than it grows up it can hold its small leaves which are quite small um, usually an inch or two long through the winter at least it holds enough of them that you can identify it in the winter time it has fairly small acorns as well. The years that it gets acorns, they're much smaller than the other oaks. Got a little bit of an acorn cap right here. That's about a quarter inch wide. So we're gonna hike back down this, from this ledge here. We're gonna retrace our steps and get on to the trail system that goes up Bluffhead Mountain. That's where I want to spend the majority of my time today, but I want to get a, a view from up here first. And yes, there is a view. It's through the trees, but it's there. Look. Of Long Island Sound, way, way in the background there. It's not that far away. A little bit of a stretch to see it, but it is out there, and um, there's many other fine views from this area, including in the city of New Haven itself, what's called East Rock and West Rock, that have views of not only Long Island Sound, but Long Island itself. And I'm almost two miles in today, into today's adventure. And uh, I've gotten a lot closer to Bluffhead Mountain. We're overlooking what's called Meyer Huber Pond. And um, we'll get a better view of that from the top of Bluffhead. But we can start to see the cliffs. and the trees of Bluffhead Mountain. And I'm not gonna guess the species of the trees right now, except I can tell they're probably not pines. It's either hemlock or red cedar, or probably both growing up there. And quite a thick layer of ancient lava flows that form the cap rock of this mountain. And many of the other mountains that run along Interstate 91 between New Haven, Connecticut and the Massachusetts-Vermont border. Um, they're almost always within sight of that interstate. And the softer rocks between these lava flows form the valley that that interstate follows. Beautiful day to be out here. I'm going to zoom back in on the map here. I started at the P in the center of the screen here, which is right along Connecticut 77. Hiked up to the V in the center of the screen here, which is that viewpoint. I don't have the name of that rock there um, on, any, on any of the literature. I don't know if it has a name, but I've got a 0 0.31 and a 0 0.21 is the distance up there. So it's about a half mile up there. Retraced my steps back down to the parking lot, went south a couple hundred yards on 77 along the shoulder, and continued on the blue and red trail. It's about a mile over to the next junction with the blue and white trail showing up um, on this screen here where it says Hemlock Brook. We're going to head up that way and eventually wrap back around to Bluffhead and maybe even explore the area west of here as time allows today. I definitely want to see Bluffhead. I'd like to look at some of the rocks on the way up there. Um, what's underneath that lava flow will look a lot different than what we just looked at. Um, there's some red 
shales and sandstones that are mapped in this area. We'll see if we can find some of those, maybe in the brook itself, and um, look at the lava itself as well. And I called this channel Let's Dig a Little Deeper for a reason. I'm curious enough to get off trail sometimes to really find what's going on um, on these mountainsides especially. Um, I've always been fascinated with geology. Um, I just think it's amazing what they've figured out over the generations by studying these rocks. And, you know, these geologists had to stand on the shoulders of the generations before them with cumulative knowledge to unravel these puzzles around here. Um, I believe what I found along the Blue and White Trail, which ascends the uh, side of Tuttucket Mountain here, this is the headwaters of that hemlock brook that I showed on the last um, view of the map. I think I found the contact between the lava flow, which is often a gray or bluish gray color shown in the foreground here on this boulder in this stream. And the layer below it is an ancient seabed that's a rusty red color and I believe what we have found up here is where the two meet and the lava flowed out over the rocks that were in um, not really a seabed it was a shallow body of water that occupied a rift valley um, I did a discussion of rift valleys um, back in August when I was at Great Falls of the Passaic River and um, that video is still on this channel and it, that, the geology of that area is very similar to this area it's about a hundred miles from here but these rift valleys continued up and down the Atlantic seaboard um, in places at least let's climb up here carefully and see if we can get a better look at the contact between the basalt or lava flow that's the name of it basalt and the um, sedimentary rocks right underneath it and I believe I am uh, standing directly on the contact between this lava flow which spread out over um, a shallow body of water that had filled up with uh, the debris of uh, the rocks that we hiked on this morning. Those rocks to the east of Highway 77 eroded away and filled a rift valley and formed these sandstones which are a little hard, they're a little hard to see with all this moss on them. But I did find some mica flakes in the sandstones in this creek that um, probably came from those ledges we hiked on a couple hours ago. So, um, you know, I rely on the geologists that have studied this area for well over a hundred years to, to unravel this story. And I'm just here to kind of tell it in a brief and um, abbreviated manner. But you know what? This is just neat to look at. I'm sure if you went around the sides of this Totuket Mountain, according to the topographic map, Many of these streams tumble down quite steeply, and I'm sure there's other waterfalls to be found that would um, expose the same contact between the lava flow right here and the red sandstones just below them. Again, these are all covered in moss, but as I've climbed up, I have seen the red color Basically, that's a sandstone that formed in an area where the minerals could rust in shallow water environments. These shallow water environments were shallow enough that in places they were actually exposed um, certain times. And the dinosaurs that roamed the earth at that time left footprints in the rocks of this um, area. And they have been preserved and on display just about 20 miles to the north of here at Dinosaur State Park. Right, here's our lava flow that's gonna form those cliffs that we can get a view from shortly. And the red sedimentary rocks underneath it. And the contact, I believe, is right here at the end of my hiking stick. And um, who knows what else we'll find as we hike today, but I came down off the trail looking for this contact because I knew it has been found in many of these streams around here and I wanted to find it for myself. So uh, quite a story to tell and a neat place just to hang out. And uh, no ice on these rocks yet. It didn't get cold enough last night for anything to freeze up. 
but this would definitely be something you'd want to do in the cooler months, but not when it's frozen. And after leaving the uh, small waterfall, that I believe was the contact between the lava flows and the sandstones and shales underneath them, we've ascended to the top of Totuket Mountain, and we're heading towards the Bluffhead Overlook. And um, most of these trails, the footing hasn't been that difficult. The first park I was in, the Braymore Park, was much more rocky and bouldery. And once you get over here on Totuket Mountain, the trails are a lot of these are on old wagon roads and old woods roads. And the footing's actually pretty easy most of the way. I did go off trail to find that waterfall, and that was difficult footing, but I uh, am set up for that. We've got our ancient lava flows forming the cap rock of this mountain here. And we still have quite a few hemlock trees up here that look okay. A lot of the ones um, on the way up were dead. But these seem to have some foliage left. They don't look too diseased. The hemlock woolly adelgid has um, killed off a lot of the larger hemlocks in Connecticut here. But some of the smaller ones still look like they're doing okay. So uh, let's hope that trend continues. And as we approach the tops of these lava flows, boy, let's just take a look at something real pretty here. It's the holiday season, and there's a lot of plants with red berries, including this partridge berry. We'll keep our eyes open for winter berry holly. I did see some earlier. I didn't take the time to video it, but we'll keep our eyes open for it. That's a real handsome um, deciduous holly that gets beautiful berries it tends to grow in wetter soils and our view is starting to open up and a couple hours ago I was right down there between that hay field and Meyer Huber's pond when I shot the video looking up at Bluffhead and now we've got expansive views as we continue along here. And yes, there's just enough sun getting through here for this bare oak to live on the edge of this bluff. But once you get back in the shade here, you would not find it. Let's pause for just a minute. We've got an ocean view coming up. And we are on what's called the Matabesset Trail now, which is the through trail through this area. And it's got a solid blue stripe on the trees, but the other trails I've been on today had a blue and red stripe or a blue and white stripe. But they're all well marked and well maintained. And there's a more expansive view of Meyer Huber Pond. From what I've read, that pond was hand dug, or at least the, um, you know, it was, it was um, formed with human labor. It wasn't natural. And as we look east and then southeast, I'm going to zoom into Long Island Sound. And way off in the distance there. I believe is the north prong of Long Island, which leads to Orient Point. And um, I believe I can see Montauk Point behind that first prong. It's hard to make out in this video. But the east end of Long Island has two arms that come off with a bay in between. And if you look at a map of Long Island, it looks like a fish with the head of the fish in Brooklyn and the two tails of the fish um, east of New Haven, Connecticut, around New London, Connecticut area, but south of there. And we're just starting to get the views here. I think this is going to continue on for quite a distance around this bluff head. And um, we'll keep soaking up this view and getting more videos as the openings in the forest allow, but plenty of hemlock up here, and I was correct, there's no pine up here. 
I learned these trees well enough I can tell them from a distance. Um, there is some eastern red cedar growing on these cliffs as well. So uh, let's keep hiking along. we got a few more hours to enjoy this perfect fall day and see what else there is to see. And as we continue along the top of Bluff Head, we're treated to an even more expansive view. At least 180 degrees in scope here. And the cliffs that were illuminated this morning have gone into the shadow of the mountain at noontime here. Low angle of the sun um, in December obviously doesn't create a lot of full uh, sun opportunities on a north-facing mountain. You have to catch it early in the morning. But again, here's our view to the southeast. With Long Island and Long Island Sound. And from this pinnacle here, we can look straight up the rift valley that occupies central Connecticut. And as we zoom in, we can see the skyline of downtown Hartford, 25 or 30 miles to our north. And that's as far in as this camera will zoom, but I believe you can make that out faintly in the distance. So, um, I spent some time on these ledges to the east here to get the view of Bluffhead, but if you didn't do that and parked at the main parking lot for Bluffhead, it's not more than a mile and a half up here, about a 400 foot climb. And um, there's a couple routes that are shorter but steeper and some e ones that are easier on the um, heart and lungs and easier on the knees as well. I'll review all that with the trail map um, after we're done this view here. We're going to keep heading southeast along the top of Bluff Head, looking for more things, and then eventually back down to where the parking lot is for the um, Braymore Preserve. And about a quarter mile southeast of that last video stop, we do have more overlooks. Pretty much continuous with several mountain goat paths that go off the main trail. So watch your footing, especially if you got um, younger children. Um, it's quite a bit of a drop off here. So uh, keep that in mind. If you stay on the Blue Blaze Trail itself, you'll be fine. But the mountain goat paths that lead to these overlooks um need need to use a little extra caution and um i'm going to need to concentrate on getting back to the parking lot at this point and may not have a lot of time to create more videos um on the way back this will be a loop hike and i've zoomed in to those ledges where I shot the video looking up at Bluffhead about four or five hours ago. And those other ledges that have the interesting shapes. So I've made a day out of this, but you could easily do this in just several hours or a morning or afternoon or honestly in the summertime, you could probably do the shorter part of this hike after, after dinner. I chose to make a day of it because I wanted to and wanted to study the geology along the way and the plants and everything else that comes along with. Today's hike started at the P. I've outlined what I did this morning to the viewpoint and to Meyer Huber's pond. 
Since then, I went west on the blue and red trail. So the rectangles on the trees are blue and red. Came up the blue and white trail here along Hemlock Brook. Descended down into the ravine, where it says 0.5. That's about the location where I found the contact between the sandstone and the basalt. And then continued up this blue and white trail and continued southeast to where these two letter V's are. Those are the viewpoints on the Matabeset Trail. And we're going to continue south from Bluffhead where the two V's are here on the solid blue trail. The solid blue trail makes a shorter route down to the parking area on Route 77. Um, that's not where I park, but you can park there and do a fairly short hike up to these two viewpoints. The blue and red trail takes a longer, easier route, more circuitous route back to that parking lot, a little easier on the, on the knees on the down slope. And then this uh, blue trail continues across Route 77 and runs parallel to it through the woods. And then it's going to be about a half mile of road walking back to the P at the Braymore Preserve where I started this day. We'll make more videos if time and situations allow. If not, we'll put the wraps on today's adventure and continue on more adventures as the winter continues. And these adventures continue on sometimes. Sometimes I don't think I have enough time to do more commentary, but when I find something interesting, I will. And uh, still got plenty of daylight left here. I found these types of rocks on other mountains nearby here in years past, and this is the first time I've found them today. But this um, steeper slope here, it's got a whole bunch of uh, boulders or cobbles made out of the lava flows that form Totucket Mountain and Bluff Head. And when the lava comes out, um, some in some parts of the world it comes out as cataclysmic events with volcanoes that are erupting in a violent manner and other times it just seeps out like in Hawaii and in Iceland it seeps out almost constantly and in this case the lava came out and cooled so quickly that the air that and the gases that are trapped in the magma did not have time to escape before the magma cooled and this rock here has so many air holes in it that it weighs about half as much as the rocks that I found this morning or even some of the rocks that are right next to it that crept down from further up the mountain. This slope here is so steep that the rocks that are above the uh, layer that has the holes in it have mixed in with the rocks that do have the holes in them. But there is a layer somewhere in here that has cooled very quickly and been filled with lots of holes because of that. So these are all fo basically fossilized air bubbles that formed in these rocks as they cooled quickly when they emerged from the Earth's crust. And uh, quite interesting. And, um, you know, if you didn't know better, you just think it's maybe, you know, minerals that had less resistance to erosion and eroded quickly, uh, more quickly than the ones around them. But these are fossilized air bubbles. I've read about these layers around here um, enough to know that. And I'm fairly certain that's what we're looking at here. We'll even zoom in a little bit. They're no bigger than uh, maybe the size of a pea. But the fact that this rock weighs so much less than the ones around it lets me know that this is um, a rock that's full of air bubbles from gas that did not escape before the rock hardened. 